you should take your seat according to the seat number as stated on your admission form. Place your admission form and identity card on the top right hand corner of your desk. Put all the stationery you need to use on your desk. If you have brought a pencil case, put it in your bag or under your chair. If you have a calculator with you, put it in your bag under your chair. If you have brought a mobile phone, take it out now. Check to see if it has been switched off. If not, switch it off now. You should also ensure that the alarm function of the phone has been turned off. You are strongly advised to take out the battery from your mobile phone to ensure that no sound will be emitted because of the alarm function. Now, place the phone under your chair in a position clearly visible to the invigilators. If you have brought any article that can admit sound, switch it off now and put it inside your bag. If you have notes, pieces of paper, books, dictionaries, word hidden pens, and electronic or communication devices, such as tablets, iPod, PDAs, pagers, MP3 players, electronic dictionaries, data bank watches, or any articles that can store information or admit sound. Those must be switched off and put in your bag. Zip up your bag and put them under your chair. Do not leave your bag in the aisle. If you do not have a bag, put your purse and your mobile phone under your chair. Please note that after the question papers have been distributed, if you are found to have any unauthorized materials on your desk, in your pockets, or on your body, or any electronic or communication devices, including mobile phones, switch on during the examination, you will receive a subject downgrading or even be disqualified from the whole examination. Put up your hand now if you have any questions. You should have on your desk a barcode sheet. Put up your hand if you do not. Each barcode label on the sheet has been printed with your candidate number, school number, candidate name, and the subject or paper name. Please check to make sure that you have been given the correct barcode sheet. Put up your hand if you have any questions. After the start of the listening test, you will be instructed to affix barcode labels in the designated spaces on the cover and the inner pages of your question answer books. If you use a supplementary answer sheet, you should also affix a barcode label in the designated space before the end of the examination. You will not be given extra time to affix the barcode labels after the time is up announcement. Do not fold, scratch, or stain the barcode labels. Each page of the question answer books and supplementary answer sheets have been printed with a page number. Do not change any of the page numbers or write your answers near them, as this might affect the scanning of your script. You should also note that answers written in the margin will not be marked. You should have on your desk a rough worksheet. Put up your hand if you do not. I am now going to distribute the question answer books and data files. Make sure you have put away all unauthorized articles, otherwise you will be penalized. Do not open the question answer books and the data files until you are told to do so.
you should have on your desk a rough worksheet, a part A question answer book, a part B one data file with an inserted B one question answer book, and a part B two data file with an inserted question answer book. Put up your hand if you do not. You should put your answer to the questions in the spaces provided in the question answer books. If you need a supplementary answer sheet, make sure that you mark the relevant task number in the question number box on each page. You should start a new page for each task. Do not open the question answer books or the data files until you are told to do so. I am now going to play the examination soundtrack. Please listen. Hong Kong Mock Examination 2022 English Language Paper 3 Listening and Integrated Skills Instructions to Candidates You should have on your desk a Part A Question Answer Book, a Part B1 Data File with a Part B1 Question Answer Book inserted, and a Part B2 Data File with a Part B2 Question Answer Book inserted. Do not open them until you are told to do so. I repeat, do not open the question answer books or the data files until you are told to do so. Now write your candidate number in the space provided on page 1 of your part A question answer book. Now look at the part A question answer book. Check that the Part A question answer book has no missing pages. Look for the words end of Part A, now go on to Part B on the last page. Now stick your barcode labels in the spaces provided on pages 1 and 3. Close your Part A question answer book when you have finished. Now look at your Part B1 data file. Take out the inserted Part B1 question answer book. Check that your Part B1 data file has no missing pages. Look for the words, this is the last page of the Part B1 data file on the last page. Now write your candidate number in the space provided on page 1 of your Part B1 question answer book. Check that the Part B1 question answer book has no missing pages. Look for the words end of Part B1 on the last page. Now stick your barcode label in the space provided on page 1. Close the Part B1 question answer book when you have finished. Now look at your Part B2 data file. Take out the inserted Part B2 question answer book. Check that your Part B2 data file has no missing pages. Look for the words, this is the last page of the Part B2 data file on the last page. Now write your candidate number in the space provided on page 1 of your Part B2 question answer book. Check that the Part B2 question answer book has no missing pages. Look for the words end of Part B2 on the last page.
Now stick your barcode label in the space provided on page 1. Close the part B2 question answer book when you have finished. You are reminded that all examination materials will be played once only. This paper is divided into two parts, part A and part B. For part A, you should use a pencil to answer all questions. For part B, you can use a pen or a pencil. Put up your hand now if you have any difficulties. It is not possible to handle complaints after you have taken the paper. The listening component is about to begin. Keep your earphones on until you are told to take them off. Open your Part A question answer book at page 2. Part A is about to begin. Part A Situation Alex, Pat and Charlie are cultural studies students at Hong Kong Metropolitan University. They are working on an exhibition about myths and traditions open to the public. In Part A, you will have a total of four tasks to do. Follow the instructions in the question-answer book and in the recording to complete the tasks. You will find all the information you need in the question-answer book and the recording. You now have two minutes to familiarize yourself with tasks 1 to 4. Task 1. Alex, Pat and Charlie are discussing their division of labor and work to do for the exhibition. Listen to their conversation and complete the note sheet below. The first one has been provided as an example. You now have 30 seconds to study the task. At the end of the task, you will have one minute to tidy up your answers. You have all heard from Professor McGonagall that we have only three weeks to prepare for the exhibition. Yeah. Do we have enough time, Alex? I mean, 
it's a brand new event for the department and we have to start from scratch. I remember Professor McGonagall wants to name it Myths Around the World. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. Don't worry, Alex and Pat. Do you remember the traveling through time by the history department? I went there to help my brother out and I asked him about his preparation work. Great! Was that exhibition on the 24th of December? I do remember it. My boyfriend took me to the exhibition on Christmas Eve. We even got into a bitter quarrel. What a pity! But I feel for you. You must have been upset. I hope our exhibition from the 13th to the 15th of August will not get you two into another quarrel. All right. I thought it's the 13th to the 14th of August. I didn't realize it's a three-day exhibition. Well, Professor McGonagall wants the exhibition to be eight hours long. When should we start every day? Uh, let me think. How about we start at 10 a.m.? Would it be too early? I'm afraid people won't wake up that early. Yeah, you're right. Then it's better we start at noon. OK, let me jot it down. From noon onwards for eight hours. Pat, can you also remark that we may need to open two hours later for preparation on the first day? Yes. So, 2 p.m. on day one it is. I will mark it down. Oh, another point to note is that we have to recruit helpers. I mean, three of us may not be enough for the event. Right. Helpers will be of great use to the exhibition. We can decide on their task later, though. Oh, we've almost forgotten the venue. Oh, yeah. Let me check. There are four exhibition sites for lease on campus. Which one should we pick? Let me see. Obviously, we want the exhibition to be indoors, or at least there should be an overhead cover. Otherwise, not only we, but also the exhibits will melt. Uh, just joking. <laughs> no doubt. The sun will burn. I don't want to turn dark for the exhibition. Oh, true. Another concern would be the stream of people. Of course, we want to draw more attention. The pavilion is too distant from our frequent must-go halls and lecture rooms. Let's stick to somewhere close to the entrance. So I guess we have a suitable place in mind. All set. What should we discuss next? Shall we go through the work we have and select the one we want to work on? Good idea. I will contact the estate office for booking the venue. I've dealt with the estate office several times. They procrastinate a lot. I have to make a reservation with them as early as possible, like now. Thank you, Charlie. I know someone who may be familiar with myths and legends all around the world. Maybe I can invite a cultural expert to an interview. Would you mind if I join you, Alex? I'm a big fan of music culture too. Sure, Pat. We also need to review the journal articles given to us from Professor McGonagall. Do you remember where I can find the links? I'm not sure. Perhaps he sent them to our mailbox? Oh, maybe, maybe he uploaded the journal articles onto the online learning platform. OK. Right. There are 30 articles to read. I think we should all share the workload for this one. Agreed. Can we also reach a consensus on the promotional strategies? I would like to start working on it early so that visitors can reserve time for the exhibition. Sure. Traditionally, we send mass emails and put up posters on the campus. What do you think? Well, mass emails cover all MU students. Hmm. However, now everyone has lessons online. I don't think they will come back to the university for class. What if we save some budget from posters? Yeah, you're right. Putting up posters might be a bit costly. 
What about those who never read their emails? That's me. <laughs> I have never read the hundreds of emails I receive every day in the university mailbox. Oh, just an idea spring to my mind. Do you use Link, the social app for university students that allows anonymous posting? I'm wondering if that's a possible way of promoting our events to non-MU students. Oh yeah, of course. There are so many active users from different universities, and I guess the exhibition can reach a larger number of visitors this way. Then I guess we have enough ideas for advertising our exhibition. Are we good? It's fine with me. Great. So let's get cracking. That is the end of task one. You now have one minute to tidy up your answers. Task 2. Mr. Hui, an administrative manager of the university, is calling Alex back to confirm the details of the venue for the exhibition. Listen to the conversation and complete the information in the spaces below. The first one has been provided as an example. You now have 30 seconds to study the task. At the end of the task, you will have one minute to tidy up your answers. Hello, this is Mr. Hoy from the Administration Department. May I speak to her? Um, uh, Alex Chow, please. Morning. Just call me Alex. All right, Alex. We have received information from your team about a cultural exhibition. I'm calling just to confirm a few details with you. Sure. Go ahead. First off, we have most of the basic details of your event, but the purpose is left blank on the form you submitted to us earlier. Would you mind giving us a short description, maybe just in a line, about your exhibition? Sure. Let me think. Hmm. Please write down, to promote different cultures. Hang on a second. To promote different cultures. Okay, that's it. We just need to, you know, keep a record for the paperwork. Next, we need to note down the source of finance for your event. Is it self-funded, project-based, department-funded, or a university-subsidised event? Hmm, I'm not certain of this. I think it's a project initiated by Professor McGonagall. But what's the difference between project funding and funds from the department? Basically, if your exhibition is one of an ongoing research project that is supported by an external fund, say from the government or research funds, it belongs to the project funding category, 
but if it is an event that is initiated by the department, then it is department funded. Let me think. Professor McGonagall personally initiated it. Got it. If that's the case, it means the cost of the exhibition is fully covered. I guess you will not be charging any entrance fee, will you? Absolutely not. We simply want more public attention on different cultures. I will mark N slash A down here. All right? How many visitors are you expecting? Some hundred, I guess. Some secondary schools have expressed an interest in coming. In fact, because of the pandemic, I guess there will be at least 700 to 800 people. I see. We need the figure for traffic control, so I will just tick the most appropriate box. Sure. Thanks. I have seen from your application form that you want us to lend you a stage, two wired microphones, some notice boards and two projector screens. Actually, we have two stages of different sizes. One of them is 4 metres times 12 metres and the other one is half the length. Which one would you prefer? Let me see. We have several honourable guests on that occasion, but they will not be on the stage. The stage is just for the welcome address and the opening ceremony. So I guess the smaller one suffices. OK. Oh, but we actually do not need the screens anymore, as we are not using projectors. The resolution is a bit too low for the 4K videos we have. We will bring our own monitors, four monitors in total. Oh, all right. I will strike that from our record. In fact, I also need to know the items that you will bring to the venue. Other than the four monitors, what else? We will also bring a pair of mini speakers to play light music. We want to create a relaxing vibe for the visitors to enjoy the exhibition. That's not a problem. By the way, some event organisers also hang a banner at the entrance of the venue. Will you do the same? Yeah. Noted. So in total, you will bring three items to the venue. Please be reminded that the university will not be responsible for these items. You need to keep an eye on them. Sure. OK. I think I have enough information from you. According to the guidelines of the university, I'm also obliged to inform you that some items are not accepted in the venue. Like what? First of all, drones are forbidden as it is an indoor area. Oh, gosh. We plan to fly a drone to take pictures from a height. I'm sorry, but we don't want anyone to get hurt. You know, flying objects in an indoor area can go wrong and cause trouble. Also, the ceiling is not that high, so please do not fly a drone in there. All right. How about confetti and refreshments? We plan to shoot confetti to celebrate the start of the exhibition and serve some snacks and beverages to the guests after the opening ceremony. Well, let me check. Confetti is all right, provided that you clean up the confetti paper afterwards. As for the refreshments, in principle, the university is okay with it. But please observe the government's latest policy. You know there are updates regarding eating and drinking under the pandemic from time to time. We will definitely check with the government's policy. One more thing. Please tell your exhibition guides to refrain from using laser pens. They can use physical pointers, 
but not laser ones. All right. We don't plan to use any pointers, actually. Anything else we need to pay attention to? Well, there are some rules for using the place. First of all, the organiser should take the responsibility to reset the venue after the event. Don't worry, we will definitely reset the place. Very good. Also, we require the organiser to arrange at least one person in charge to be on duty when the venue is in use. OK, let me jot it down. One contact person should stay on the spot all the time. Got it. One last rule is that you need to submit a written report, preferably within seven days after the end of your event. Again, we need the report for auditing purposes. No problem. Wish you good luck for the event. Call me any time if you want any support. Thank you. Goodbye. That is the end of task two. You now have one minute to tidy up your answers. Task 3. Alex and Pat are interviewing an expert in Thai culture, Mr. Smith, to narrow down the content of their exhibition. Listen to the conversion and complete the note sheet below. You now have 30 seconds to study the task. At the end of the task, you will have one minute to tidy up your answers. Good morning, Mr. Smith. We are Alex and Pat from Metropolitan University. Thank you so much for being the interviewee of our cultural project. You are very welcome. As the founder and chairperson of Thai Culture Society of Hong Kong, I am always happy to share my knowledge about Thai culture. That's great, because we have a lot to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get the ball rolling, shall we? Sure thing. First of all, we have decided to focus on the eating habits and celebration of festivals in Thailand in our project. In fact, Pat has done some research on the eating habits of Thais. Pat, do you have anything to ask? I do. I understand that Thais have different dining etiquette from us. But is there any taboo regarding their eating habits? That's an excellent question. In fact, there is. As you may know, Thailand is one of the largest rice exporters in the world. Naturally, rice is an important part of their diet. It is even associated with gods and myths. That is why it is considered unacceptable for people to leave rice on the plate. You don't say. But how is it related to gods and myths? 
Have you heard of the rice goddess? I'm afraid this is the first time I've heard of it. It's all right. She is a goddess who ensures good harvest and makes sure that people are well fed. According to the legend, wasteful eating habits will trigger her anger and cause disastrous outcomes. I see. Let me mark it down on our note sheet. Moving on, about the festivals in Thailand. Are there any special festivals in Thailand worth mentioning in our project? Thailand has a lot of intriguing festivals. The most popular ones are definitely the Thai Lantern Festivals, which are called Loi Krathong and Yi Peng. They are celebrated on the full moon in the 12th and 2nd months of the Thai lunar calendar, respectively. The 12th and the 2nd months. Got it. What are the names of the lantern festivals again? They are called Loi Krathong and Yi Peng, which means Water Lantern Festival and Floating Lantern Festival, respectively. Oh, I have heard of the latter one. It is actually one of my favourite festivals in Thailand, and it's quite famous in Hong Kong too. But what do people do in the Water Lantern Festival? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Although the Water Lantern Festival is less known to outsiders, it is widely celebrated among Thais themselves. During the festival, people make lanterns by themselves before floating lanterns on the river. They make their own lanterns? How do they do that? Yes. First of all, they use the trunk of a banana tree or baked bread as the base of the water lantern. Next, green leaves and flowers are used to cover and decorate the base respectively. Afterwards, a candle and an incense stick will be put in the middle of the base. Then, the candle will be lit. Finally, is it to make wishes before launching the lanterns into the water? That's right. But why do they release these lanterns into the water? For Thais, celebrating this festival is a way to apologise for using too much water. This way, they can also thank and pay respect to the goddess of water and the water spirits. To my surprise, Thai people are quite superstitious. That's true. Apart from the points I have mentioned, they also pray to send their problems away as they release the lanterns. I see. Can you tell us more about the Floating Lantern Festival? How do people celebrate this festival? Alex, didn't you mention that this is your favourite festival in Thailand? What do you know about this festival? Well, I hope I won't embarrass myself in front of an expert like you. <laughs> Based on my past experience, people release lanterns into the sky in the night. First of all, they use a white paper with a crossed base to make the lantern. A candle is then attached to the base. Before lighting the candle and releasing the lanterns into the sky, people write down their wishes on the outside of the lantern. Am I right? Wow, I am impressed. Well, I have nothing to add, except that instead of white paper, they in fact use thin rice paper. No wonder the lanterns are so light. So, Mr Smith, in what way is this festival important to Thais? Aside from the fact that this festival is one of the ancient traditions to mark the end of the rainy season, it is also a way to pay respect to Buddha to gain merit. 
Paying respect to Buddha? Yes. The festival is based on the legend of a candle-carrying bird which once visited Buddha and talked about the merits with him. By paying his tribute to Buddha, the bird was blessed with great joy in its next life. But nowadays, people mostly celebrate this day in order to send their bad luck and mistakes away. If the light goes out after the lantern disappears in the dark, it means you will have a good year ahead. What if the lantern crashes? Then you'd better be extra careful since it signifies a year full of bad luck. Oh no! I'm sure it's simply a superstitious practice. You will be fine, Alex. Back to the topic. I'm aware that there is a ghost festival in Thailand too. Is that so? Ah, the festival where people dress up in ghost masks and participate in parades and parties. Yes, it is a real festival called Phi Thai Kun in Thailand. Parades and parties? That sounds awesome! It is a festival related to Buddha as well, right? Yes, that's accurate. According to the legend, Buddha, in one of his past lives, was Prince Vesantara. One day he went on a journey so long that many people believed that he was dead. Surprisingly, one day he returned to the kingdom, safe and sound. Hence, his followers all rejoiced and started to celebrate his return. Allegedly, the celebration was so monumental that it woke the dead. As of today, people commemorate this day by dressing up and putting on ghost masks. Wow! That is quite a story. I did not expect there to be so many legends and hidden purposes behind these festivals. True! Thank you so much for answering our questions, Mr Smith. It was an honour to interview you today. The honour is all mine. Well, it's time for me to go. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions. Goodbye! Goodbye! It was such an informative interview. But now the problem is we cannot cover all three festivals in our exhibition at length. Shall we just focus on two? What do you have in mind? Shall we focus on the two festivals that are less known to Hong Kong people? We can introduce some rare festivals to our audience. Great minds think alike. So let's roll out your favourite festival, shall we? I mean, you can release sky lanterns in other places like Taiwan as well. I guess most of us have given it a try already. Agreed. That is the end of task three. You now have one minute to complete your answers. Task 4. Professor McGonagall is meeting up with the students to check their progress and share his research background and experience with them. Listen to their conversation and complete the answers below.
please note that you do not need to answer in complete sentences. You now have 30 seconds to study the task. At the end of the task, you will have 3 minutes to tidy up your answers. Morning, Alex, Pat, and Charlie. Come on in, take a seat. Morning, Professor McGonagall. Is everything all right? Have you encountered any difficulties, or do you need some assistance from me? So far, so good. I mean, we've done some research, talked to an expert in Asian cultures, and all we need now is you. What do you mean? Professor McGonagall, we are wondering if you can be the guest of honour for the exhibition, delivering a welcome address at the opening ceremony on behalf of the department. Sure, why not? It's my pleasure to be of help. A lot of thanks in advance. Before that, we have to assemble some information of yours so that we can introduce you properly in the brochure and to the stage. Of course. So, how did you get on board with studying cultures? I mean, I remember you said in class that you didn't start off with a degree in cultural studies, did you? You're right, I didn't. After graduation from secondary school, I went overseas. I wasn't exactly sure about what to study, so I referred to my public exam grades. And you know what? I got an A in physics. That's why I took the physics major when I got admitted to the University of Reading. Oh, that's a first for me. I always thought you studied Asian cultures in university. Well, yes and no. After I found myself not particularly interested in physics, I applied for a programme transfer, unlike quite a few undergraduates who do the same thing these days. At that time, it wasn't common for students to transfer to another programme. I had to make a lot of effort in convincing my professors to allow me to do so. Indeed, nowadays, it is a lot more common for us to switch to another view. Pat is an example. What's next then? Well, as soon as I applied, I began reading literature about world cultures. I buried myself in a sea of readings in the library. Twelve hours a day without much sleep. Very soon, I found myself very interested in ancient legends across the world. That has got to be weary. How could you survive that? Burning midnight oil for four years consecutively? Luckily, it wasn't four years. It was just three, thanks to the British curriculum. I only got to read extensively for three years. If not, I might not have found my research interest. Amazing! I wish I could learn from you and become a well-respected professor in the future. I'm sure you will. Given enough time and determination, you will succeed in virtually everything. Speaking of learning, all those years, what did you gain from your research? Well, my years at graduate school taught me two things. People think that myths and legends are completely made up. Nevertheless, myths and legends stem from common beliefs. Instead of being fabricated, they arise because people believe in the same idea. That's why common beliefs among locals lead to the emergence of myths and legends. It's kind of true. We believe in the myth that New Year is worth celebrating. 
And that's why we have so many stories that tell us how auspicious a new year is. Indeed. Another thing that I concluded from my research was that some local stories are fading away, probably because we pay less attention to them. I mean, there's a lot going on every single day. We just can't possibly remember everything we're told. Yeah, we heard loads of myths and legends when we were young. But as we grow, we simply forget some of them. I can only recall one or two Chinese legends that I have heard of about romance. I guess the romantic story about Niu La and Zhi Nu is one that I can't forget. It's just too memorable. It is. But still, there are some unnoticed rituals that are almost forgotten by most of us. That's why I have invited you to help organize the exhibition so that our next generation can still read the stories that are to be forgotten. I see. I feel honored to be part of the meaningful work that we are doing. I do hope you enjoy working with me too. After this exhibition, I hope people's awareness of keeping local cultures alive will be raised. Nowadays, our attention is all drawn to modern, trendy, stylish stuff. Fewer and fewer locals, especially the younger generation, pay attention to the traditional cultures. In fact, it has shocked me that you all are so enthusiastic about cultural stories and heritage. I really appreciate your effort. Don't mention it, Professor McGonagall. It's our pleasure to learn from you. And it's also our responsibility to keep our own local cultures alive. Indeed, we are natives born in Hong Kong. If not us, then who? I guess this exhibition also reminds us of our cultural identity too. Anyways, we also need some information about your ongoing projects for the final remarks when we introduce you in the ceremony. Would you mind briefing us? Why not? My team and I are currently researching the connection between the livelihood of ancient Greeks and, you know, their gods and goddesses. Oh! I learned about ancient Greece in history lessons back then in secondary school. But what do you mean by the connection between them? Well, some historians believe there was some linkage between the way Greeks lived and why they worshipped those gods and goddesses. For example, Athena, the goddess of war, is believed to be a spiritual symbol to raise the morale of soldiers. Sounds interesting. Can I join you on the project after the exhibition? I'm sure it will be fun. Certainly. And students, I know you are familiar with computers, networks, technology, all sorts of things I know little about. I'm actually seeking help to create a YouTube channel for my online project. What? A YouTube channel? What for? I bet Professor McGonagall is trying to promote his findings to the younger generation. Teens nowadays love YouTube. They just can't stop binge-watching videos, even after lights out. Brilliant, Alex. I want to put up some narrated animations there. Right now, I already have some ideas. Do you want to take part in the project? Wow, I'd love to give it a try. Count me in two. Let me do the narration at least. That is the end of task four and of part 3a. You now have three minutes to complete your answers to task four and tidy up all your other answers.
Part B. Look at page 2 of your data file. Situation. You are Jackie Louie. You work for Grand Bay Falcons, an international football club that manages players to take part in competitions and tournaments. You are responsible for administrative duties. Your boss, Fura Williams, has asked you to do some tasks. You will listen to a recording of a meeting among staff members of Grand Bay Falcons. Take notes under the appropriate headings. Before the recording is played, you will have five minutes to study the question-answer book and the data file to familiarize yourself with the situation and the tasks. Complete the tasks by following the instructions in the question-answer book and on the recording. You will find all the information you need in the question-answer book, the data file and on the recording. As you listen, you can make notes on page 3 of the data file. You now have 5 minutes to familiarize yourself with the question-answer book and the data file.
The recording is about to begin. Turn to page 3 of the data file. OK, let me check. The green light is on. We are being recorded now. I'm sorry, but Jackie is on holiday, so I'm recording our meeting for him to write up the minutes when he returns. No problem. Let's kick off. So we are building a new website as we facilitate our 100th anniversary. Have you all checked out the layout? It looks fine to me. What do you say? Agreed. It is much better looking than the current one. The navigation is easy and the graphics are amazing. Great. Fiora, please tell them to proceed with this design. Can we also spend some time on scrutinising the information we post on the web? I think there are some mistakes in the draft. Hmm. Oh, here is one mistake. This is our 100th anniversary and we were founded in 1923, not 1922. Oh, you are right. It must be a careless mistake. Let me mark it down. 1923. Thanks, Fiora. One more thing. Not a mistake, though. But it is better to put down our new address because we will be moving very soon before the website is published. So it's better to put our new address on 99 Baker Street on the website. Sure, I will make the amendment as well. On which floor will our office be? The 13th. OK, so the 13th floor, 99 Baker Street, London. Got it. Finally, we are getting a new office and a new stadium too. Speaking of the new stadium, the grand opening will be on the 1st of August 2023. We decided not to put it on our website yet as there is still some time before it's in use. All right. However, will Oscar talk about it to the press in the pre-season press conference? I think our new Essex Stadium will attract a lot of attention. He surely will. Let me remind Jackie of that. He's responsible for drafting his speech. All right. Next up is the list of accomplishments up to date. Well, we were the champion in the White House tournament in 2020. And then in 2021, we also got the championship in the long-awaited Queen City Cup. Yeah. I still remember that exhilarating evening. All of us were elated and went to the pub for drinks and celebration. The night is still memorable. That's almost the most honourable award we have attained in recent years. But it doesn't look good if we just have two awards. Shall we also add that we were the Music City Invitational finalist? I think it sounds all right. I mean, we almost got the championship too. Yes, why not? Maybe it's best if we add our awards in 2018 too. It's kind of sad that our performance wasn't quite impressive in 2019. You know, our main players were either injured or on leave that year. I agree. Fine with me too. We were the South East College Showcase champion and the Hawks Cup runner-up, right? I believe so. It's on our current website. You can double-check the names. Great. By the way, about the fan club, the board of directors have approved the increase in membership fee from £8 a year to 10 That's reasonable for our members, I think. These years, we have had much fewer competitions, which leads to a reduction in ticket sales and souvenir purchases. Yeah, 
We did a projection and found out that our fans will be inclined to continue supporting us. And for that price, not only can they pre-order tickets to football matches hosted in our home stadium, but they can also participate in our fan club gatherings and celebration events. Of course, there is a quota, first come, first served. Well, I think currently they also enjoy a 5% discount when they buy souvenirs from our official stores. Is this still a thing? Surprise! Now they enjoy a 10% discount on every souvenir and jersey. I'm not sure that's the reason they buy more from us, but it's certainly good news to our fans. Oh, speaking of good news, I heard from um, Jackie or Eric. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I heard that we have new community projects to be initiated soon, right? Positive. I think Oscar will also mention them in the press conference. What's confirmed now is the youth team and the Fitness Plus program. Oh, the youth team for teens under 18, right? Yes, the official name is GBF Under 18 Youth Team. U for under. What about the fitness plug thing? Well, active fans can come to our stadium to access the gym room. We call it Fitness Plus instead of just a fitness program because our GBF players will be stationed there from time to time to coach them. Wow. Then the fans get to exercise with the stars they look up to. What a life. I guess I will hit the gym more often when the stadium is open. I can't imagine how packed the gym room will be. That will be a task left to the operations team. I'm sure they will come up with a solution. Are we good to go for lunch now? My stomach is rumbling and grumbling. I need food. I need food. Can you hear that? <laughs> Since you are hungry, let's talk about our centenary celebration dinner. It's our 100th anniversary. We have reserved the Four Seasons Hotel for the anniversary dinner. Four Seasons Hotel? Is it the one two blocks away from here? You're right. That's convenient. When will it be, though? Three days after Christmas, 28th of December. 2022. The evening cocktail session starts at 5 p.m. and the dinner begins at 6. James, please remind our guests to arrive at 5 p.m. for the evening cocktail session. The press will be there to do short interviews with them. Consider it done. Before our meeting comes to an end, Amy, can you update us on your research on women's football? We are to write up and publish an article to promote women's football soon. Well, women's football is also called women's association football. And the first Women's World Cup was held in Italy in 1970. And the second one in Mexico the next year. Italy and Mexico? I thought it's in England or somewhere else. I'm shocked too. What's even more shocking is that FIFA only held the very first FIFA Women's World Cup in 1991. 21 years later than the first Women's World Cup. And you know, FIFA actually held the first World Cup for men long before they did for women. About this, there's actually quite a fierce discussion over the inequality between women and men in the football industry. Well, just by looking at the names of the World Cups, it's obvious enough. What do you mean, Amy? Well, obviously, the FIFA World Cup is for men only. And for women, it's called the FIFA Women's World Cup. 
Why is the word women specified in the one for women, while nothing is specified in the one for men? Wow, I actually didn't realize the difference until now. Right. Instinctively, I would say it's because of tradition and history, as in, historically, FIFA World Cup has been for men only. But now that they have one for women, they have to distinguish between them, and the easiest way is to add the word women to the name. Right, and not right. Now that the World Cups are for both genders, I think something has to be done to resolve the issues. Well, this is worthwhile discussing in the article. Let's ask Jackie to briefly mention the gender issues before he writes about our training program for girls. Yeah, we have requested the IT department upload all the info onto our website. So girls that are interested can find out the details there. Great. I guess we can call it a day then. Time for lunch. See ya. That is the end of the listening component of this paper. You will now have one hour and fifteen minutes to complete the written tasks in either Part B one or Part B two. An announcement will be made when time is up. Take off your earphones now and turn off the radio. That's the end of the listening component of this test. You will have one hour and fifteen minutes to complete the paper. An announcement will be made when the time is up. You may now start.
you have 15 minutes left. If you have used the supplementary answer sheet, make sure you have affixed barcode labels and marked the question number boxes on those pages where there are answers. You will not be given time after the time is up announcement to affix barcode labels or mark the question number boxes.
you have five minutes left, make sure you have written your candidate number and affix barcode labels in the designated spaces on your question and answer box and all supplementary answer sheets. You will not be allowed to work on your question and answer box, including affixing barcode labels, using an eraser, filling in question numbers, or holding any stationery after the time is up announcement. The data files will not be collected. Make sure your answers are not written in the data files.
time is up. Stop working. Put down all your stationery. You must not write anything or work on your script, or you will risk a marked penalty. Close your question answer books and put them on the desk next to the rough worksheet. If you have supplementary answer sheets, tie them in your question answer book with the piece of string provided. Now, tie your Part A question answer book with the Part B1 or Part B2 question answer book which you have attempted with a green tag. Put the unattempted Part B1 or Part B2 question answer book and the data files aside from the Part A and B question answer books. Make sure that your admission form and identity card do not get mixed up with the question answer books. Your question answer books tied with the green tag will be collected now. The rough worksheet and the remaining barcode labels will be collected later. You can take away the unattempted Part B1 or Part B2 question answer book and the data files before leaving the examination room. Stay in your seat quietly until you are told to leave. Do not pack your personal belongings until you are told to do so. While collecting the answer scripts, if an invigilator discovers that you have not stuck a barcode label on the cover of the question answer books, to facilitate scanning, the invigilator will let you stick the label under supervision. You are required to complete a report form before leaving the examination room.
This is the end of the examination. You may now pack your personal belongings. Make sure you have your admission form, identity card, and other personal belongings. You may now leave.